Hey folks, Alan Manning, the Hot Rod Hippie here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a toolbox tour. We're going to check out the toolbox that I work out of primarily with my fabrication tools. I recently asked folks what they'd like to see on this channel in another video, and one of the suggestions was a toolbox tour. I have three toolboxes I work out of regularly. And one's my mechanical box, one's electrical, and kind of just a roll down the hill collection box. And then this one is primarily my fabrication tools. So we're going to take a look at this one first. The box itself is a small snap-on 40 inch wide toolbox. I originally bought it for kind of a roll around design so I could use it for a rolling tool cart to hold a lot more of my stuff and go to jobs. However, in this shop space I am limited on space so I work with it as you see it right here against the wall. Let's go ahead and start with the top of the box and then we'll work our way down. Up top here you can see some of my Milwaukee cordless tools lined up, the heat gun, my half inch drill, my 3 8 drill and my 3 8 cordless ratchet. They're some of my go-to most commonly used cordless tools. Over here is the charger, the M12 and M M18 one. That's what I really like about this line, at least one of the things, is that you have that one charger covers all the bases for the cordless tools that I use. One of my personal favorite things is this drill bit storage container. It's really handy because you can store a bunch of different drill bits of the same size in little easy to access areas. I found that drill boxes, the normal index style setups, just ended up getting too messy and too difficult. They bend, they bow, and they just be a pain. This is a much simpler and more direct way to go ahead and store my drill bits. Now let's go to the top drawer. Over here you can see the heavier, bigger plastic mallets I have for shaping metal. These are from Ron Fournier Enterprises. I really like these because they are significantly heavier than the cheaper ones you'll find from other companies, say Eastwood or Harbor Freight or something like that. I keep a shop bag in here, one of the small ones with a hand strap sewn on the back of it so it's really handy for getting into tight areas or just quick little shaping jobs, as well as a range of slappers from the wood leather face slapper to a couple of ones I made myself out of spring steel and a couple of ones from Martin Tools and Ferguson independently. I also have my Pullmax jig in here for making Pullmax dies and just some odds and ends, pry bars, corking tool. You can check Metal Man Sweden for the idea of how this tool works. I took the inspiration from him. Drawer number two. In drawer number two we have my body files, both convex version, flat version, a adjustable profile version, and this neat one I picked up from somebody off of Instagram quite some time ago. It's got a nice radius to the face. The rest of this drawer is dedicated to measurement tools. We've got stuff like the calipers, I have a digital angle finder, a regular torpedo level, and squares out the wazoo. All kinds of different squares, different lengths, different shapes. 16 inch rule, all kinds of different measurement and layout tools handy for when I'm designing or laying out different panels. Down to the third drawer, we have tape measures. I have plumb bobs. These can be really handy for laying out lines on things, measuring for chassis fabrication, soft jaws for doing AN lines and different plumbing applications or wherever I don't want to mar up things. I have a range of different layout tools in here as well. You'll notice a theme, I have a lot of layout tools for design work. I have circle templates, I have radius gauges, which are great for checking the radius of panels while you're working with them, either shaping them or checking the panel on a car to know what you need the panel shape to be. These ones, these nice long ones, are from Jeb Green, I believe his name is, at Cutworm Specialties. I honestly forget where I got these ones from. They're really handy because they have a lot of radiuses on them. And then I have these smaller ones from Ben's Metal Shaping over in Europe somewhere. I also have the Jamie Jordan Signature Series layout tools. Can be handy for different shapes, sizes, and they're much larger than the standard ones that you buy at, say, like the craft store. And that can be kind of handy sometimes when you just need a bigger design. Now we're going to move on to the next drawer, which is the real hammer home. This guy has all of my hammers on this side and my dollies on this side. I have a mixture of Martin Tools and Snap-on hammers. They are both my preferred brands. I quite like the different sizes, shapes, angles, and designs you can get from these companies and the quality of them is top notch. I have a handful of T-dollies that I've produced myself for different shapes, radiuses, and such that I've needed over the years. And then a whole range of dollies for different purposes. A neat thing I have here 
is actually a concrete breaking chisel. I picked this up from Harbor Freight, a real simple tool. What I did is I knocked down the tip of it so it's a lot softer radius on there so I can use it for crisping up inside corners or use it as a really small tea dolly. It was cheap and really easy for just a quick, somewhat versatile tool. Moving on down the line, we have what has ended up being cutter storage. I have hole saws in here, a lot of different sizes of hole saws that I find useful for hammer forming, for cutting holes in sheet metal, all kinds of things. Some of my favorite cutters, they are the rotor brooch style cutter from the folks at Blair, or Blair Cutters is some of the other names for their different style ones, such as the bigger ones, the hole cutters. They are really handy for really quick quality hole cutting. Usually this drawer has a lot of air tools in it. I took them out so you could see easier what else is in here and I'll get to the air tools in a minute. On down to the next drawer, this is kind of a junk collection drawer to a point. I keep some of my clamps in here, the bigger heavier duty ones. My dimple dies are kept in here. As well as my Clecos, a lot of them are on the car at the moment. Tin snips couple different versions of aviation snips for cutting sheet metal. I use these very often. The brand I personally prefer is Midwest. And then a really neat tool from the folks at Strong Hand Tool. This is a locking expander plier. This is really handy for spreading apart tabs and you're putting suspensions together or fabricating something. So you can go ahead and adjust it to different lengths, different sizes, and adjust that panel, that piece outward easily and lock it in place. You don't have to sit there and hold it in place while you go ahead and tack it or weld it or line it up. This can really help you out. I really like these. And the bottom drawer. In the bottom drawer I have tap die sets. I have a standard set, the 75 piece set from Matco Tools that does standard end metric. And then I have a large standard set that goes up to one inch 14 thread. That's really handy for when I'm doing suspension work. Four links, bigger, heavier stuff. I also keep this Roper Whitney hole punch in here, really handy for punching holes for spot welding panels if I'm going to be doing that. I keep my transfer punches in here, really handy for transferring holes from one piece to another when you're trying to reproduce parts or line something up. I also have my TIG weld cups in here, just arrange the ones that I've used over the years for different torches and purposes. I really love using these for quality TIG welds. I got the old Toxic Fab number 14 in there, and on down to some of the Plain Jane simple number sixes and such that you will find at any welding supply store. And something that I think is really underrated, something I use all the time in the restoration world, is a re-threader set. This set is super handy for cleaning up threads. It has standard coarse, standard fine, and metric threads in here. This is great for an auto tech or restoration, especially when you want to clean things up. I find people far too often buy a tap set when what they really need is a re-threader set. You're less likely to damage threads with one of these sets and you'll get a better quality job if you're just trying to chase through threads. Underneath of the box, I got my hydraulic flaring tool set for making brake lines, transmission cooler lines, fuel lines. I have number four riveter here for doing solid rivets, bucking them and such. And a little hard to pull out at the moment, but I have a stud welder that's really handy for popping panel areas. I don't use that too often, but sometimes some of the jobs where you're not going to want to knock that panel out, you can't get to a dent, it can be handy to pull with that tool. Now let me show you air tools, and then one last interesting thing in this area, the way I store my clamps. As far as air tools are concerned, these are the ones that I use most commonly. From right to left, we have my DynaBraid DynaFile that is extremely handy for fabrication. I have the Snap-on Body Saw. I really love that thing. It's strong. It's the best body saw I've personally used. The Snap-on Half Horsepower Die Grinder that I put in my product comparison of Half Horsepower Die Grinders. The AirCat Straight Line Cutoff Wheel. That is personally my favorite favorite cutoff wheel. I use that more than any other style. It gets in tighter places. It's pretty strong and it really does a nice job. I also have of course the Ingersoll Rand Orbital Sander. That guy's really handy for finish work. The Matco Reversible Sander. That's great for chassis fabrication for heavier grinding and sanding operations. 
Over here we have the half horsepower die grinder from Sunex. Also in my half horsepower roundup, I use that for more of the finishing end of things with some DA paper on it. I have the cutter for stainless braided line for making AN hoses, as well as tubing benders, the swage lock wand, the quarter inch imperial, 3 16 one from Earl's Performance, 37 degree flaring tool, and the old imperial large combo one for the bigger tubes. Up here on the wall above it, I have a tram gauge, as well as a handful of long rules, say six foot, four foot, such as that. And last but not least, we're gonna go off the tripod because this area is hard to reach with tripod, but I'm gonna show you how I store my vice grips. They take up a ton of room, and I just don't have the toolbox space to be storing all of my vice grips because I own a fair amount of them. So let's take a look. This is my vice grip storage. It's a piece of plywood with a bunch of dowels drilled and glued into it really makes it easy to store them, keep track of them, and I can pay attention to when some are missing and really see where they are, where they should be, and go looking for the ones that aren't there. Over in the corner, I also have my pogo pole for pulling dents and stretching on panels and such. It's a handy tool that I don't use a heck of a lot. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed this tour. This has just been my fabrication tools. Let me know if you want to check out my mechanic box. I can show you all the sockets, the wrenches, the actual auto tech tools I used when I used to work at the dealership and what I still use today. Let me know what you think of that down in the comments down below. Go ahead and drop this video a like if you found it interesting and subscribe to the channel for more content like this every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.